Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about URL structures and how page URL structures affect your SEO performance. All right, let's dive in. So in this video, you'll be learning what is a URL page structure and also why is it important to make sure that your URLs are structured correctly and why is that going to affect your SEO? So we'll find out a bit more about that and also some of the best practices around creating URL structures and create, creating URL slugs and things like that to help improve both user experience and search engine optimization. You'll also learn about some common URL issues that you might come across and some of the ways how to remedy those too. And you'll also learn how to maximize your user experience because URLs are things that we look at before we actually visit. So we hover our mouse over, we see, okay, this is a link that I want to visit because I think I know what it's about. And then it goes from there. So what is a URL structure? Great question. It's basically the format of a web address. And that includes the protocol like HTTP or HTTPS, the domain name like example.com, optional subdomains, for example, could be like blog.example.com, um, directories or paths, for example, be like example.com slash the category name or slash um, home or slash blog. And then specific resource identifiers. So it could be like a specific file name, like a JPEG image or a link to a spreadsheet or a video or whatnot. So there's lots of variations there. So in SEO terms, it's more, it more often refers to the end bits of the URL, like past the domain. And this is known as the slug. And you don't ask me why they named it like this, but it's kind of like the, the end bits. Um, and that part uh, can be formatted in different ways, can be structured hierarchically, can be flat, can be all sorts of things. And it's important how you do that. And we'll, you'll learn exactly why. So here's an example of a really bad example of a URL slug. So this is on Bloomberg.com and you'll see that in their politics uh, section of their site, uh, you'll see a page ID and it's just some sort of number, basically the ID number. Um, they also have a session ID um, and it's just some random characters there and also where you came from. Uh, the referral thing. So it's not very friendly for the user. They don't really understand what this page is about exactly. Um, it could be anything for the, for their, for what they think. And when they land on it, obviously they'll figure it out. But from a URL page structure point of view, not a great example. So why is URL structure important for your SEO? Firstly, it helps boost rankings uh, indirectly because Google considers the structure of your URLs when it determines where to place your site uh, in search results. It'll look at it and say, oh, this is very friendly. This is easy to understand. I understand the hierarchy and the relationships between the pages there. And it really uh, can help long term. And also with the user experience, if the users are more likely to engage with the site and the pages, uh, then it will also help indirectly boost your rankings because of the uh, the behavior signals on the page. So yeah, it enhances user experience. It makes it easier for the users to understand the content before clicking on the link. And it makes it, makes it more simple to navigate throughout the site because you know what to expect. You know where you're going. You know what page that's on and where it's located and all of that. Um, it also can increase click-through rates. So if the URLs are descriptive enough, uh, and it matches the search intent of the user. For example, let's say they're searching for a specific uh, type of lawnmower, <laughs> for example, uh, and the URL is talking about, uh, has that exact term in it, it's relevant and they're more likely to click on it. Uh, it also encourages link building because the clear and relevant URLs um, basically will tell the user exactly what it is and people are more likely to link to it because it's quite obvious what it is, what the content is about. So let's talk about some best practices while you're building your URL structures. 
So the first thing is to include relevant keywords that are easy to comprehend and that are relevant to the content on that page. You don't want to just pick some random ones and you don't want to just force a keyword because you want to rank for that keyword. You want to make sure that does that main topic, is that prevalent, is that in the URL? Uh, you want to avoid unnecessary characters or parameters to eliminate complexity. So just like I showed you in that Bl Bloomberg example in the URL, which is completely like unreadable by the human, um, you want to eliminate that. You want to make it much more simple. Um, and you want to also mar match the URL hierarchy with the page hierarchy. So let's say the page is under nested underneath a subcategory, then in the URL, you should see a category slash subcategory slash the page slug, this page name. Uh, with the relevant keywords in there. So you know exactly where it is. So here's an example of a really great URL structure. So on Hike SEO, on the mobile friendly page, a mobile friendly test page, you'll see that it's nested underneath a, a few different subcategories. So under the Learn SEO Hub, um, it's nested under, underneath the on-site SEO uh, category and then technical SEO subcategory and then it's the mobile friendly test article. So you can see it's really easy to understand, it's really easy to see where it's located within the site, and it's easy to read and all of that. So it's really, this is a great example you can go by. You uh, Ideally you use hyphens to separate the words instead of underscores. That's because Google and other search engines understand that hyphens separate words, underscores combines them. So you always want to use hyphens. Um, and basically, it also adds readability. It's much easier to read words um, that are separated by hyphens rather than underscores. So for example, if you have a best practices page, you would uh, name it like this, best hyphen practices instead of best underscore practices. You want to also include relevant keywords. We mentioned this before, um, and that provides context to users in search engines. So it gives you a little clue before you click on the link or visit the link what that page is about. Um, so that's really important when it comes to expectation and fulfilling those expectations. Um, make sure those keywords align with what the page content is about, which is always important for relevance. Create short and descriptive links. So be concise when you're creating it. Don't create really, really long ones because A, it's going to be hard for someone to remember. B, it's going to be, take some time to type. And C, it's just going to just be ugly and long and you don't need to include unnecessary words. So yeah, elim eliminate unnecessary words like the or and or things like that. N eliminate any numbers or special char characters, things like that. Just make sure it's the core keywords, the core topic words. And make sure the structure is consistent and it's logical and predictable. So what are some of the common URL issues that you can come across? Well, uh, firstly, it's forgetting to redirect old URLs and updating existing ones. So let's say you change the page and you update the URL. Well, you will need to make sure that you 301 or permanent redirect the old URL so that it passes on any of the link equity that that page that URL has gleaned from backlinks from other pages and that it doesn't end in a 404 error so that's really important um, using the wrong redirect type I mean there's not right and wrong but using a redirect that might not be appropriate so for example using a 302 or temporary redirect when in fact you intend to move that page permanently to the new URL, then it would be wiser to use a 301 uh, permanent redirect. And also failing to regularly check for and fix broken links. So obviously we're not perfect, so we might forget to uh, redirect a URL that we changed. So it's important to constantly check your site and make sure that you spot any 404 errors and using like a software like hike seo can do that automatically for you it just scans and it will flag any 404 errors uh, which will be really helpful so you make sure that you keep the urls updated so that they're relevant to the page content so if you change the topic completely update the url now maximizing your user experience you want to 
do these URL changes because it will lead to improved navigation. So it makes the navigation on the website much more clear. You know where you are in the hierarchy so you can navigate up or down or wherever you want to just by looking at the URL. Um, and it also helps the visitor understand the content of the page before they click it so they can decide is this relevant for me, is this interesting, and then they can click through it if it is. For example, um, example.com slash product123. Okay, well that's pretty, you don't really know what that product is. Um, versus example.com slash blue running shoes. So you know exactly what that product is. So someone, if someone is looking for blue running shoes, they're most likely going to click on this link. But if they come across the URL above, they might not click the link because they're not sure if that's the correct page for them, if you see what I mean. So here's another example of a really messy URL. Um, this is New York Times, and you can see they sort their articles uh, by, first of all, the year and the date, um, and then the category, so technology, and then it's some random string like 27 Google, whatever that means, and then a ton of parameters and IDs and things that the users don't really know what it's about. So it's not really friendly. You don't really know what that news article is about unless you actually visit it. So again, an example of what not to do. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any sort of questions at all about URL structures, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, if you haven't yet tried Hike SEO, please do. Uh, you can sign up today and it will actually flag up these 404 errors or recommend certain URL structures. And it will look at how you've mapped certain keywords uh, to your pages and make sure that it's uh, relevant for your pages so you can track the right pages, the right keywords. There's so much that it does and it's built for beginners, small business owners, as well as agencies as well. So there's lots of tools and great things that you can use Hike for. So please check it out and we'll see you there. All right, take care and I'll see you in the next video.